Hey, what's up, pilots? I'm excited to introduce my new frame, the FB01. Um, gonna go over some of the design goals, flight configurations, um, features of the frame, and accessories that I'll be offering in the online store. I originally started developing this frame in January of 2017, and my goal was really to just design a frame that I wanted to fly. Um, I was getting tired of rebuilding frames that would break um, from practice and training, competing, so I wanted something that was durable, would withstand impacts, and would be something that I could just rely on for practice, competition, any sort of flying at a parking garage, a field, or you know, crashing into asphalt. So um, with that main goal in mind, um, I've made the frame have 5mm arms. Um, I tried this at a 4mm and although it was lighter in weight, it wasn't quite as durable and I didn't want to make the arms super wide um, to accommodate 4mm arms. I wanted to keep them as thin as possible while maintaining durability. The second design goal I had was to protect all of the electronics. I wanted to make sure that if I have a crash, my flight controller and PDB are isolated from the top plate and the canopy in the front. Um, one of the things I really didn't like about some of the other frames I've flown is a crash and my top plate and standoffs would shear flight controller and electronics on the inside. So I wanted to make sure that those electronics were protected and wouldn't get damaged in a crash. The VTX and receiver are mounted behind the flight controller. They're protected really well in this location, so in a crash, most of the impact's gonna go into the front arms and the canopy, um, if you hit the canopy, but your VTX and receiver should be pretty safe. Um, the antennas are located on the back of the frame, and the idea here is, when you're racing, um, one, they're not sticking up and going to catch a gate as you're flying through it, um, and two, they're protected from impact. So. Um, there's really no way for this antenna to take a direct hit. Um, the SMA connector for your VTX antenna is mounted on TPU, so it's flexible. The SMA joint itself doesn't take that much stress. Um, in flying this style of mount, I haven't broken a single SMA connector. I have broken some antennas, like uh, Pagodas and more um, fragile antennas, but it happens very rarely. So. I like this, this configuration for racing when you're going to be doing a lot of crashing. I wanted to design a frame that was balanced and minimalized rotational inertia. Once I tried flying this, um, in comparison to bottom mount, which has much higher rotational inertia, I felt like this quad just went where I wanted. Um, when I'm entering a corner into a gate, I can just pinpoint exactly where I want to early and it goes right there. I don't have to apply a ton of throttle to fight the mass of the drone, like trying to push out of the turn. Um, so a lot of pilots who have tried this kind of frame, um, you know, low rider, 15 millimeter stack, they've fallen in love with it and they've realized that there is a significant difference in handling and performance. Of course, there are some advantages to having bottom mount battery. Um, bottom mount battery tends to land right side up more often than having a top mounted battery. Um, but for me, I felt the handling and balance were more important for me to actually complete a race, fly consistently, be smooth, and simply not make as many mistakes. Um, so I planned to make this frame perform and handle um, as best as possible so that when you're flying this, it does what you want and you don't have to fight it. I think if pilots really gave this a fair shot, and tried flying this type of frame, they will realize that there are significant advantages and practicing with the frame that does what you want will make you a better pilot. Um, so I, I really feel like this does what I wanted and um, I love flying it. Another goal I had in mind when designing this frame was to isolate the flight controller from vibration. Um, this is one of the reasons why I don't particularly like flying unibodies. Um, unibody frames like vibration from the motor transfers all the way down the arm directly into the plate since it's a unibody and you know your flight controller is tied to that plate so I wanted to create a structure uh, that protects the flight controller from vibrations and really that's the reason why this frame is a you know sandwich architecture um, any vibration that comes from the motor and the prop 
It, it may transfer through the arm, um, but having a five millimeter arm helps to prevent that. But then when it reaches the main body where you have um, 1.5 millimeter plates in the top and bottom, that vibration tends to stop here since the resonant frequency of the center of the body is so much higher. So that combined with um, these TPU air mounts that I've designed, um, they allow the flight controller to float freely and really protect it from seeing vibrations that originate from your propellers and motors. This was a huge goal of mine because I wanted to be able to tune my flight controller aggressively, have a locked in feel, be able to fly almost any type of propeller, um, no matter how thin or flexible the propeller is. And also if the propeller is damaged, I wanted to make sure that the flight controller was protected from those vibrations. And um, I think I think this frame achieves that. Um, I've had some of the most aggressive uh, PID tunes on Beta Flight, KISS, and Race Flight. Um, I primarily fly Race Flight and Beta Flight these days. And I'm really happy with how this um, architecture and flight control mounting scheme are working out. There's a couple different configurations that you can fly this frame in. Um, this one is set up to have the battery mount front to back, and that's I think the optimal orientation for racing. Uh, you can also mount the battery uh, orthogonal and have it run uh, left to right like this. And all you do is uh, take the Velcro strap off the top plate and put it through some different slots. This allows you to fit a GoPro on top of the canopy with the Velcro strap. And this is really nice because this is primarily a racing frame, but if you want to record some high definition footage of a race you're at, say like at the end of the day when everybody's hanging out and just doing free fly, you can strap a GoPro onto your canopy and with the TPU interface, um, TPU here covering the GoPro and TPU on your camera canopy, there's a pretty high amount of friction and this can't really slide off once the strap is held down. Um, this also provides you know, a natural dampening structure for your GoPro to sit on, and I've gotten some really smooth GoPro footage as a result of that. I wanted this frame to be easy to maintain. Um, so one of the features is you can take this top plate off with four screws, and once that top plate is removed, you can access all of the electronics. Um, nothing is tied to your top plate except for you know your velcro strap and if you want to zip tie your XT60 wires to your strap um, it will be there but electrically there's nothing attached so four screws and top plate comes off and now you have access to your flight controller VTX receiver and PDB uh, so it's pretty quick to get to everything. If you're using my air mounts, you can also um, unsnap them. If you have strong fingers, you can squeeze and push them out. Or you can use needle nose pliers here and carefully press against the edge of your board. There are no traces on the outer diameter of these screw holes, so it's safe to put um, you know, tools on this edge of the board, but just be really careful when you do it. Don't knock any components off. If you happen to break an arm, which I think is really unlikely, these are 5mm arms and we've done months of testing to make sure that they're as durable as possible. Um, the arms are swappable um, with two screws on the bottom of the frame. So the way we do this is um, there are nuts that are pressed into the bottom plate and those nuts do not come out. Um, so even when you take these two nuts out, these sorry, even when you take these two screws out and slide the arm. Um, the nuts that are pressed into the bottom plate stay there, they're captured. So you can replace the arm in a matter of minutes by just taking out two screws. Um, I also wanted this frame to be versatile, um, good for almost any pilot to use. So the canopy here, um, this canopy weighs around 10 grams and it's got um, the ability to adjust camera angle by loosening these screws, you can adjust the camera tilt from roughly 20 to 60 degrees. And, you know, that's good for beginners, freestyle, and aggressive racing pilots who want to go as fast as possible. There are some accessories that I'll be offering on the webpage. Um, the first accessory is um, the GoPro case that you saw on this other frame. 
Um, this is going to come in different colors, and you can find those colors um, on the webpage in the store. And basically, this is a case that you just slide your GoPro into. And once it's in there, there's really no reason to take it out. You can get to um, all the connectors, the SD card, and the buttons on top without ever taking this out of the case. Um, I designed this maybe a year ago, and since then I, I haven't had to go to Best Buy to replace my GoPro. I think um, my warranty is actually about to expire, so might have to do something on purpose about that. Um, but anyway, please look for these cases in the store. I think they're great, and um, they fit well like right on top of the frame with the Velcro strap. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm super excited to launch this product and I hope you guys enjoy it.